I'm going to take a look now at some electric fields questions from 2004 to 2009. Uh, the first question I'm going to consider is uh, June 2005, uh, Physics 4 paper, and it's question 6. Uh, first part of the question asks why the permittivity of a vacuum epsilon not has units. Why must that have units? Well, where that uh, permittivity of uh, a vacuum came in was in Coulomb's law, where Coulomb's law states that the force is equal to uh, 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught times q1 q2 over r squared. So that's the force between two charged particles, and epsilon naught comes in there. Now, why must that have units? Well, it must have units in order to make sure that this equation and other equations contain an epsilon naught balance. So, why must that uh, constant must have units? Well, that is so that it balances the units on either side. of Coulomb's law equation or other equations where it's used. Now, F equals 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught, that's the way that Coulomb stated that law. These days uh, you get away with saying f is equal to k q1 q2 over r squared. Where k, if you look on your formula sheet, uh, if you just consider your formula sheet there uh, for a second, you'll see uh, epsilon naught is equal to 8.85 times 10 to the minus 12 farads per meter, or 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught, if you're given that as k, is equal to 8.99 times 10 to the power of 9. So that's the, that's the value there that we would use in most equations whenever we're trying to solve these. All right, an isolated point charge rests on an insulating surface. Show how the electric field strength E varies with the distance. Well, E is given by K times Q over R squared. So it's an inverse square relationship, which means that we get something which is going like that. Important that it doesn't touch either axis. So it's the shape of the curve and not touching either axis there, becoming asymptotic as it goes on there. We now have a question involving two point charges of plus 15 microcoulombs and minus 15 microcoulombs placed uh, at a uh, midway between the charges. A point There's a point Y and X then is a point on the line uh, that joins from those. Okay? And the distance between here and here is, sorry, between x and y, that distance would be 50, and this distance between the two charges is 50. So that means that x is a further 25 uh, millimeters beyond that. Now it asks us to mark the directions of the electric field strength at the points x and y. So we'll consider x first of all. x first of all, there's a field at this point which is, uh, because it's a positive point charge that we put here, it would be attracted towards the 15 and it would be repelled by that. But because this is further away, then this one has more significance, which means that overall there will be a field in that direction at this point. Now, to work out what's happening at Y, I'm just going to take a little aside over here and say, right, so this is Y, and then we have a point down here which is minus 15 microcoulombs, and we have a point down here which is plus 15 microcoulombs. Again, if we put a positive charge at Y, what happens is it gets pushed by that one and it gets pulled by that one. The overall effect of those is to produce a resultant force, a resultant field strength in that direction. So Y has a field strength in that direction. We're then asked to calculate the magnitude of the field strength at x. So what we've got is, this is the point x, and now we've got a field going in that direction due to the, and that's the uh, 15, the minus 15 microcoulombs, and we've got a field in that direction due to the plus 15 microcoulombs. So 
we're going to work out the field strength then E is equal to KQ over R squared and so what we're going to find is that the minus 15 microcoulombs again if we go back and look at the diagram that we had the minus 15 microcoulombs because it's closer isn't much bigger so it's overall going to be uh, the larger field strength due to the minus 15 and then we've got to subtract the plus 15 microcoulomb from that so what we're going to do is we're going to put in here that e at x is going to be equal to so first of all it's k which we said was 8.99 times 10 to the power of 9 times q which is 15 microcoulombs okay, so we'll write that as 15 times 10 to the minus 6 and that's divided by 25 times 10 to the minus 3 all squared 25 millimeters squared and then we're going to subtract from that 8.99 times 10 to the power of 9 times 15 times 10 to the minus 6 same charge but a different uh, negative rather than positive and then that is going to be and how far away is that well that's 75 times 10 to the minus 3 all squared so when we feed those values in what we get is that the field strength at x is equal to and that comes out to be 1.92 times 10 to the power of Let me just check that in my calculator. No, oh, made a slight mistake there. That's 10 to the power of 8. So 1.92 times 10 to the power of 8. Whenever, it, of course, it's 10 to the 9, 10 to the 9, so it must be. Okay, so. We now move to a new part of the question body of mass M has a negative charge and is stationary in the region between two horizontal metal plates to which a constant potential difference is applied label the polarity of the plates well if this is a mass that mass would uh, naturally want to fall down therefore it must be being pushed back up by the electric field which means we must have a minus here and a plus here and you must include both of those in order to get uh, your full marks there because you wouldn't get uh, the field working all the way across there if you didn't have that. So the bottom plate commences to move upwards with uniform velocity on the axis in figure 6.4 sketch a graph to show how the electric force on the charged body changes with time. Now this is an interesting uh, shape here but what happens is it moves up something like that All right to try and explain why that is if we consider then uh, e the field strength in between these two plates is equal to v over d and it's also equal to f over q that's what the field strength is therefore that means that f is proportional to 1 over d so as d gets smaller f gets bigger because it's an inverse and this is moving this plate is remember this plate is moving up at a constant speed so the distance here is getting smaller and smaller and that means that we're not going to have a linear relationship here it does have to have a value at this point here because there was a value there already it did have a field strength already at that point and so as it moves up that's what happens to uh, how the electric force on the charged body changes with time so the electric force is getting bigger because d is getting smaller and because d is getting smaller in a linear fashion if you put that in there it's a curve that we obtain here 